Tis the season for New Year's resolutions. Should Christians make them? Yes. Why? Because we're charged to excel still more. On this podcast, we've got Matt doing. We're going to talk about an acronym. I can't wait to share it with you. It's based on the words SMART, S-M-A-R-T. Specific, measurable. We'll tell you the rest later. So, so Matt uh, grew up on a dairy farm. Uh, he lives in northeastern Pennsylvania. He's married to Janice. They have eight kids, and That's right. um, he's uh, he's a teaching elder uh, at a church called Hope Community Church up there. He's serving with his dad. That's really neat. Hey, I know a few guys yeah. that do that. That's really mm-hmm. really nice. Yeah, it's a great blessing. Yeah. Uh, he also uh, serves uh, as a board member on a, a church planting movement in the Middle East. But he's an entrepreneur. Uh, he's a licensed physical therapist. Uh, he's an athletic trainer. Uh, he's started, uh, you know, started a company in the space of uh, uh, physical uh, training. And fitness, and um, but and he's now the VP of sales at a large national physical therapy company, and um, he operates a division of about seventy-five uh, clinics in the Mid-Atlantic area. So, hey, it's just so good to have you and your experience with us, and you've helped us at Church and Family Life over the years in mentoring some of our young men in our internship program. We've had a lot of conversations. You've been a huge encouragement. To me, Matt, I really, really appreciate you. Well, it's been a joy. Been a, been a joy to be part of that for sure. You do a do an amazing job with those young men, and uh, yeah, thanks. It's so, been a joy. So here we go again. Um, you know, uh, first I want to start off by uh, speaking the obvious, and um, I want to talk about America's top New Year's resolutions. This is right off the internet. <laughs> Must be true. Are you ready? <laughs> Americans are just so consistent. Um, uh, exercise more, 44%. Eat healthier, 42%. Spend more time with family and friends, 34%. Lose weight, 31%. Live more economically, 30%. Spend less time on social media, 24%. Improve my performance on my job, 23%. Okay, the list goes on. <laughs> but <laughs> those are pretty common. I don't think these any of these would surprise us. And I'm confident, you know, probably most of us here have, had resolutions like that. So let's let's talk about why they fail. Let's sort of talk about the numbers. Why why do most people fail in fulfilling their New Year's resolutions? Yeah, I I mean all kinds of reasons, but uh, and I, I yeah I guess you chose the fitness guy because that's a big one, isn't it? Yeah. A lot of the times uh, at the New Year, it is. Um, you know, activity related. I want to, I want to move more or I want to lose weight, uh, these kind of things. But, uh, you know, whatever it is in life that we're trying to change, uh, the majority of times we set out to do something with new year's resolution, the majority of the times they fail. And I think one of the big reasons is, I mean, there's, there's a multiplicity of reasons, but one big one is we bite off more than we can chew. Yeah. Right. We 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 make these large, grandiose goals and we don't think to chunk them down in bite size, achievable um, <clears throat> realities. And so when we don't uh, quickly achieve this overarching dream, we give up. Uh, you know, we we um, especially I think so so much in our culture, right? We're the microwave generation or the microwave society. Right? If if what I, we see this so often in our world is if I can't if I have a physical problem and I can't take a pill or get cut, oh, you know, don't ask don't ask me to set goals six weeks out and actually try to work at them every day to accomplish it. <laughs> that, that's hard work. Um, so yeah, I, th- I think one of the big reasons is, um, that we're, we're not getting clear, um, and, and just setting too big of goals. So in your business, you know, you've, you've seen, you know, people start off gangbusters January 1st and, you know, you've, 
got a front row seat of talking to these people who finally fall off. What what do, what do they say to you? Yeah, you know the the, the one um, the picture that is helpful, I think, and a lot of people say, "Oh yeah, this is what happens." Is you know, imagine you're driving down the road on your way to work and you get a flat tire. Right? We've all been there. No fun. And so you have these moments where it's just going through your head. How am I going to get to work? How am I going to accomplish everything? Like, what do I do? And finally, you get out and you either call AAA or you get out of the jack and you fix your tire, put on a spare tire. And I don't think there's anybody that has gone to so much despair that they pull out their jackknife and slash the other three tires. <laughs> They're just like... <laughs> this is so bad. I might as well just slash them all. <laughs> and this is what we do though, with many of our new year's resolutions, right? We we're making a little progress. We've actually had a couple days or a week or two weeks. We haven't seen the result yet, right? Cause the results lag behind our efforts. And so we're putting this effort. We don't see the results yet. We, we get a flat tire, right? We have that flat tire moment. And instead of just recognizing it's a moment in time, needs a little tinkering. We just go and we slash all the rest of the tires <laughs> and just quit. <laughs> right? And so if we could think of it from that standpoint, it's just to say, you know what, to recognize when, you know, everything is not, we think of a bar graph up and to the right, you know, as time goes on, I'm going to have this steady improvement, but I've never seen anything in life that works out that way. <laughs> there's this, there's this quick growth and then a little plateau and then some regression. And then it's a decision. Do I want to get back on the growth path? And, and some of these blips in the, in the graph can happen on a minute by minute basis, right? Not just day to day or week by week, because so much of it is a battle of our mind. And uh, I think if we could be more patient with some of the goals that we've set for ourselves and set more realistic um, and incremental goals and just be kind to ourselves. You, you know, I run into this all the time talking to guys about uh, family worship. You know, they start off really well. Maybe they run for a while, you know, pretty strong and then they wane and then they're really, really discouraged. And I always say the same thing to them. Hey, everybody's like that. Every man I know, I'm like that. You know, I, I, I do well, I do worse. I do well, I do worse. And you can, let, you can let that, you know, be a source of condemnation or heaviness or anything like that. But, I mean, for me, you know, that's kind of, I like the way you said that. It's kind of the story of our life. We, 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 don't, we don't jet straight, you know, straight up. We go, our, our graphs are jagged. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So maybe I can even take us back uh, even uh, earlier than what we've been talking about and ask and try to answer the question, is this even Christian activity at all? Should Christians be tangled up in New Year's resolutions? And I'm not necessarily making the case that we should uh, that New Year's resolutions, there's anything sacred about that. Clearly there's not. <clears throat> but while it's not exclusively Christian, I think it is Christian to resolve to make progress. And I just want to roll out a couple of texts of Scripture that I think uh, prove that. The first is 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 1. Paul writes, Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more just as you received from us how you ought to walk and to please God. So if you just ask your, yourself the question, uh, are you walking as the Lord Jesus and Paul taught us how to walk to please God, you would have to say, sort of, sometimes there's a lot of room for growth. And, and Paul actually in uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, 1 is calling us to grow. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a, a sense where uh, we know what we're supposed to be doing. We're doing a level of it, and we need more and more. And that really is simply resolving to make progress. Uh, here's another one, 2 Peter 3, 18, where Peter writes, uh, But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory both now and forever. Amen. So uh, he, he receives glory 
when we grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. We really aren't supposed to stand still. We're supposed to be making progress, and especially in the faith. So uh, one of the things you brought to our attention, Matt, is how critical it is uh, that you you make the right uh, resolutions. And so you say that they should be resolutions about things that really matter. Mm-hmm. I think part of our problem is... If it was really a priority to us, and if it was, and or if it was easy to do, we would have done it last year. We wouldn't need to make a New Year's resolution. It's <laughs> sort of saying it wasn't a big priority to us uh, heretofore, and so we. Uh, one of the things we can do for ourselves is to focus on the things that really ought to be priorities for us. Yeah, if we're going to make resolutions, it ought to be it ought to be a biblical value. You know, what are your thoughts on that, Matt? Oh, I, I couldn't agree more. And in fact, the scripture, James 2, came to mind, too. And I think so much of our growth comes through trials, doesn't it? And I think so much of it comes through whether we're willing to embrace them as something good God has put in our life or um, despair over them, right? So so James 1, um, 2 through 4, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. And so, I think when we can cons- when we consider those trials joy, we we lean into them, which, um, which produces growth. But you know, here's here's one that came to mind for me, um, and I just said this actually yesterday. Uh, I've had some challenges lately that have uh, tempted me <laughs> to think negatively and despair on a couple fronts. And so when I preach the gospel to myself, I say, no, you you are to rejoice in all circumstances, right? Again, I say rejoice. And so I said, okay, here's my this moment resolution, which is the cure is gratitude. Hmm. And so I set a smart goal for myself. I I think um, maybe... Uh, people would benefit from this concept of SMART goals. It's an acronym, S-M-A-R-T. And if you're going to have a resolution that will stick, um, you know, use use this paradigm, which your goal should be specific, right? And so in my mind, I've got this general, I, I, I'm worrying, I'm thinking about negativity. My general thought is, boy, I'd like not to be that way. And I'd like to be thinking more positively. That's, that's kind of nebulous. Mm -hmm. But if I can drill that down to something specific, gratitude, okay, I am going to be specifically more thankful and then uh, make it measurable. And so for me, I I came up with two things. I said, I'm going to journal two pages every day. And my one page, I can be thankful for I mean, I'm going to be thankful on one page every day, and I can say the same things over and over. But on the <laughs> second page, I'm going to make myself every day say something different that I haven't written the day before. And I'm also going to at the family di- dining table, and we did this last night. It was a lot of fun. We go around the table, and we'll do this every day. I- I'm getting ahead of myself to say T is time specific. And for me, I, I said I'm just going to do this through the end of the year. I'm going to do it through December 31st, this personal journaling and with my family. And what we're going to do as a family, we're going to go around every night and we're going to say two things we're thankful for. You can say the same one thing every night, but the second (laughs) thing you could have not said any other night, right? So we're just making something very measurable. The third SMA, A is attainable. Don't shoot for the moon, right? Mm. I'm going to spend four hours in solitude every day for the next <laughs> three years doing nothing but pouring out my gratitude. Right? That's that's not going to be attainable for me. But journaling two pages and having a quick discussion around the family table, that's attainable. And keeping it um, and making it relevant, right? So the relevancy is this is, this is important to my spiritual life. Uh, always, but especially at the at this point, and then time sensitive, uh, just put a time bound on it. We, many times our goals don't get met, or our resolutions don't get met because we don't we don't measure them. If you can't measure it, you can't manage it. You gotta you gotta put some measurable uh, steps to what you want to achieve, and then put some time frame around around that as well. Hey, that's gold. That's really good. That is that is so helpful. 
And really, you know, the, the God, God, when he saves a soul, he calls them to bear fruit. Uh, we, the, the, the whole principle of being fruitful and multiplying the parable of the talents, you know, shows us that we should, we should be stretching. You know, we, we should be trying to multiply what, what God has given us. I think resolutions fit that way of thinking about life, that, that we uh, excel still more, like uh, the Apostle Paul told Timothy. Uh, you know, we, we set the things in the past behind us, and we, we, we reach to the upward call of God. That's, that's Christianity. Christianity is moving forward. Christianity does make resolutions. Um, in the Old Testament, you have, you know, people uh, going into the temple and, 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 and making vows before God. Uh, the book of Ecclesiastes talked about that. He says, don't make vows rashly. If you're going to make a vow, you know, make it something that you're going to, you're going to complete. So the, the Christian really is under uh, a divine order to bear fruit. And uh, making resolutions is a, is a big part of that. But, hey, I love that acronym acronym uh smart that's helpful yeah, yeah. uh well w- one of the things that you said that uh, really resonated with me was uh you know essentially trying to hit the home run uh g- going for something that uh probably isn't realistic and looking for exponential change when really uh often when you go for exponential change you get discouraged you end up with no change if you go for incremental change just incremental improvement through time is really how most people make the significant gains in their life it, it's not the home runs it's it's base hit base hit base hit score mm-hmm. and uh yeah. so we should be aiming for that and to me that just has to do with routines you know r- habits yeah uh r- a rhythmic life um you know, I want to be a big advocate for a rhythmic life. You know, do do many of the th- same things on autopilot. Hey, th- probably twenty five years ago, you went to a sales training uh, event. Yep. Where this trainer said something, I'll never forget it. Mm-hmm. Uh, he talked about being wildly. Su- how do you be wildly successful? What did he say? Yeah. Are Are you wired to be wildly successful on autopilot? Meaning, uh, do, do, don't set up. Uh, to have to have Herculean effort to get good results, mm-hmm. actually set your patterns so that they deliver good results as a, as a matter of course, so that you are wired to be successful on autopilot. Mm-hmm. It's a really helpful way to think about things. Yeah, routines, autopilot, those things are really helpful for fulfilling resolutions. Yeah, I mean, think about it from a pilot standpoint, navigating a ship or an airplane, if you're one degree, one, one degree of change over a long period of time is a massive difference in destination. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, as we're moving through life, just dialing one, one at a time. In fact, the, the research shows that if you try to change two variables, the, um, you know, it's exponential in the failure rate. Whereas if you keep it to just one variable, it, for instance, uh, and then and then if you write it down, that the chance of achieving it goes way up. So if you just choose one variable, your chances go way up. Then if you add to that, write it down. And then if you add to that, tell somebody else about it <laughs> mm-hmm. or tell several people about it. Now your chances go way up of achieving it. And, and, you know, for one, when it comes to weight loss or, or having a diet with less infl- inflammatory factors, you know, some people say, I'm, I'm going to cut out all carbs. But what might actually help someone more is to say, you know what, soda is the worst thing for us possibly, you know, anything we could possibly do. If I'm drinking soda at all, I'll still eat my cookies. <laughs> I'll still do whatever, <laughs> but I'm just going to cut out soda, right? And until that becomes a habit that you're comfortable with, now you can talk about your favorite dessert <laughs> or desserts, you know? So yeah, just not trying to... Um, you know, tackle too much. You know, this thing about, you know, focus on one variable. Uh, one of the things that's helped me a lot, and just in terms of daily uh, and weekly exercise, is um, I, I realized that if, if I'm going to, you know, be on a treadmill, I'm not, I don't like it. I don't really like going on a treadmill, but here's what I really like. I like walking outside. So, well, what's helped me in, in fitness is to do the things that I like to do. Uh-huh. 
and I, I, I know everything doesn't fit into that par- paradigm, but um, I love to walk outside and get in the sun and see what's going on, and and I and I, and I don't want to stare at a wall on a treadmill. Now, some people can probably be really consistent on a treadmill. I found I can be really consistent by walking outside because I like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely, uh, Scott and Matt. So here, here's what I did in preparation for this podcast. I looked up my 2022 resolutions. Uh, and I'm humiliated to report that they were in the second place I looked, not the first place I looked, which means it's been a while since I looked at them, right? <laughs> uh, in, in December, you might have to look at the second or third place that you look to find your resolutions for the year. Uh, I wrote down 10. I did recognize them. That's good. And I'm, I'm, about, I'm about 50-50. So about uh, f- uh, uh, five or six out of the ten, I have a shot of of uh, getting done by year's end, and uh, so I- I'm not too happy that I didn't get them all. But I but I'm pretty sure in looking through them, if I hadn't written them down and sort of uh, kept them on my mind in various ways at various points of the year, I. Uh, I don't think I would have gotten to the halfway point. So I really am glad that I went through uh, the trouble uh, uh, to do that exercise at the beginning of the year. I think I did more this year because I did. Mm -hmm. And uh, then in looking at the list, there were a couple of things that were really significant, I think, that were accomplished that didn't even make the list. So that's the other thing that should be said. When we make resolutions... Uh, life has a way of putting other things on your plate that you didn't anticipate, and there there are opportunities that never make the list, but are really significant opportunities. I was afraid to look at my list, Jason. I'll <laughs> get, I'm going to do it after this broadcast. I'm going to see what. <laughs> we'll see if you can find yours. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, um, a procrastination is a. It, you know, is a problem. I like what you you uh, told us, Matt. Uh, you have a you have a goal. You know, you s- s- starting right now to the end of the year. That's fantastic. Um, you know, I, I somebody said to me, you, you don't need a new resolution. You need a now resolution. You you need to you need to just do it now mm-hmm. and right. start carrying it out. Yeah. Hey, uh, thinking of January one as magical is a is a mistake. Uh, and and uh, Matt, when you were relating that story of of making near term resolutions, there really is nothing magical uh, magic about January one. When we identify mm-hmm. areas where we need to make progress, we can uh, do it then and not wait. Uh, there's another there's another issue, and I'm just going to call it opportunity cost. Because if you're going to do something, it usually means you're not going to do something else. So true. If you're making resolutions, it's uh, it's helpful to say, okay, what is standing in the way of this? You know, what's in my life right now that if I keep doing it, I'm not going to make it. Um, and I I think you know, commitments to read the Bible, to do various things that are really good for your soul, are like that. Uh, th- there are things that have to die in order to make something live. That's just real. That's just realism about life. So, if if you make a resolution, you might ought to think about what you should resolve not to do as well. So, I had uh, three parting shots. Let me shoot them. Okay. Uh, number one, uh, go for the top buttons. Meaning, mm-hmm. when you button a shirt, if you uh, take the top button and put it in the wrong hole, it's wrong all the way down. So uh, pick things that really matter, that if you get it right, other things fall in line as well. Uh, number two, count the cost. Uh, Luke 14, uh, the, the, this would be a secondary application, but, but Christians should count, uh, uh, heed Luke chapter 14 and, and count the cost. Have an honest assessment about whether you're really willing to pay the price to make progress in in an area. And honestly, if you're not, don't start. Uh, we, we should be people who count the cost and then follow through on the things that we resolve to do. And then uh, three, all work and no enjoyment of the fruit is not sustainable. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, you've you've made these long lists and. If you if you really accomplish them all, it would be all work and no enjoyment of the fruit. You do, humans are just not wired to keep going uh, through that. And honestly, that's not even biblical. We we are 
uh, to enjoy the fruits of our labors as well. So there needs to be some sort of a rational, sustainable ratio of work to enjoying the fruits of, of what you're accomplishing. Mm. Hey, those are great. Those are great. Matt, final shots. Yeah, I just think that's so critical that, uh, you know, effective coaches, when they're coaching other people, they don't just stop uh, before that, that that becomes a critical question to say, okay, now what are the obstacles that are going to keep you from attaining the goals you set? And so I I think that is an absolutely critical one, um, that as we're setting goals, setting resolutions, we need to take the reflective time to say, okay, what, what needs to go in order to add what needs to go. And to Jason's point about the top button first, I like that. I never heard about it, but uh, I would think of it in terms of flossing your teeth. When, when we give ourselves to more discipline in our life, it filters out into so many other areas of our life that if I wake up in the morning and I floss my teeth, make my bed, <laughs> everything else seems to, uh, to be uh, done you know, better as well. So yeah, just, I, I echo what you guys are saying. Yeah. On autopilot, wildly successful on autopilot. One of the most helpful things, at least for me, is just to have things that I just do on autopilot. I know they're right. I don't have to feel like, I don't have to feel like doing any of that. Right. It's just what I do. I'm not run by my feelings. I'm run by objectives, you know, in that sense. But I like my objectives. I, pr- I think I do because I love those objectives. Yeah. So... Um, anyway, brothers, thank you. Hey, this is really helpful stuff. Yeah. Good. Yeah, that is, that is really good. You know, the, the, um, the thought that I, that has helped me so much, um, with any life change is to think of three triangles and we have to change our narratives. Our self-talk is so many times defeating, mm-hmm. right? So if we, if we're making sure we're, we're having, um, healthy, good, positive, uh, hopeful narratives, uh, the, the track that's playing in our mind. And then we give ourselves to the kind of habits you're talking about, Scott, where we're, we're just turning an activity into a habit and then building upon that good habit, other good habits. But then the third one is often overlooked, which is community. And this is one thing I think from a fitness standpoint, you know, the general public has not changed over the years. Only about 16% of the population has a gym membership. Most people don't, but the gym membership is powerful primarily for the community you put yourself in, <laughs> not so much for the the weights that are accessible, because that's the third component to any sustained uh, change we want to make, which is surround yourself with people who can reinforce those positive narratives and healthier habits. Uh, and without that that support structure um, and community, you know, sometimes our our effort to change the narratives and change the habits can be short lived. Amen. Amen. Okay. That's it. That's it. That's a wrap. Thank you for joining us on the Church and Family Life podcast. And we hope you can join us next week and uh, be fruitful, multiply, excel still more, uh, be wildly successful on autopilot before the Lord. We'll see you next week. Thanks for listening to the Church and Family Life podcast. We have thousands of resources on our website, announcements of conferences coming up. Hope you can join us. Go to churchandfamilylife.com. See you next Monday for our next broadcast of the Church and Family Life podcast.